genuinely spent like 60 hours prepping for this so I hope that someone watches it and actually likes it I guess like and subscribe I got all this scenery for free there's about 40 pieces here it's official Games Workshop merch let me tell you how you can get it too cast your mind back 34 years 1988, and Games Workshop aren't the big evil conglomerate we know them as now, grabbing our money, charging us double what other miniatures companies charge for arguably the best miniatures. I guess they're a luxury product, and I do get it. They're the best, so you pay the most. But anyway, this stuff here is all papercraft. It was released in a book called Warhammer Townscapes in 1988, five years before I was born. And I've spent 60 hours making this to showcase it to you. This is the cheapest, fastest way to fill a board with terrain. Right now I've got them on a 6x4. This is too much terrain. This is too much terrain to possibly have a game with. Me and my friend did have a game with about half of it. Half of it's enough. So if you don't want to spend 60 hours making it all, you could quite easily just pick the buildings you like. There's some fantastic buildings. You've got nice little cottages. You've got slightly more complicated buildings with things like archways in them. You've got towers, you've got the church, the prison, the water mill. I believe that's quite infamous for being hard to make and yeah, yes, it was annoying. But let me tell you how I got these for free, because that's why you're here. Right now, I've checked eBay and you can get an actual page of the original Warhammer Townscape on eBay for £25. One page. That's not a whole building. That's two walls from one building and two walls from another, the, the thing I found on eBay. It's useless. What you can do is go onto Google, type in Warhammer Townscape PDF, and there it is. It's free for you to find on there. It's free for you to download. Make sure you don't download a virus. Be safe on internet. And it is there for you to take is it stealing? Is it immoral? They're not making any money from it anymore. And they've got way bigger problems with people stealing their IP for things like Thingiverse, Cults 3D, those kind of sites where you can get STLs of what? Aren't space marines? Those aren't space marines. It's a gray area. A gray area I'm going to promote. I thought it'd be quite a good idea to show you guys not only a showcase of all of this stuff here, but how to make it. So I have saved one building for you, it's one of the simplest buildings to make, and this is going to be my tutorial. As far as builds go, this is one of the easiest. What I've got here is the instructions. It is the Warhammer Townscapes front pages. I've just printed these on paper, and I've printed the rest on a relatively thin card, not too thick because um, you don't want it to be messing up the corners and stuff where you bend it and things meet, it can get a bit layered. You don't want that. So, a reasonable card. You can see how floppy that is. You can hear how floppy that is. Take that future me when I do some sound editing. There's one page at the start of this with some vague instructions of uh, what's a glue tab, what a chimney is, what an attic window is, and how to use scissors. So what I recommend is that you do indeed use scissors. You could use a scalpel and cutting mat and get all fancy, but this stuff is not that detailed. I mean, there's loads of lovely little things which we'll get onto later to make these buildings your own, but for the main bits, scissors will do. What you're gonna to wanna to do is cut along these edges. You can be quite rough when you're cutting along the glue flaps like this because it's all gonna be bent under and glued in. You will not see it. Make sure you're delicate cutting around the top edges and like the little bits where it dips in, that's important to cut apart so the flaps can fold independently. Be careful along the actual bits of wall along the side like that, because that will be seen. You've got little bits like this you need to snip apart again so they can fold independently, but you've got to really keep an eye and watch. When I was looking for the roof, I noticed these other little parts that turned out to be a free little thing that weren't in the instructions. It's this weird little grave statue thing with some kind of violent message written on it. 
that could be a nice objective marker, something like that. So that's lovely. Bonus. When you've cut everything out, next stage is the folding. You can be fancy and you can get a metal ruler and a cutting mat or something like that and, and make sure you do it exactly. But after doing 60 hours and 40 other buildings, you get pretty good at just doing it by hand. Fold down all the flaps where the yellow meets the wall. Make sure you don't fold them completely. Make sure there is a little kind of 90 degree angle there because these want to be glued against the roof. Make sure you fold along the lines where the walls have to bend too. A side note about the flaps is that they're yellow on this build and different colour on every other building. This lets you pick out the pieces very easily when they're on the sheet that you need to cut out of. Once you've folded all your bits there, get some PVA glue. I use Elmer's because I know how it works and how it reacts. Glue one flap at a time to start with and stick it into the side of the other building. You may want to use a hairdryer at this point, make sure you wipe off all the excess. And the hairdryer just sets off that little bit so it's more kind of tacky and stuck so you can work on the next bit. Glue the next flap and squeeze it together. Wipe off any excess, make sure it's aligned right before you go back to the hairdryer to just kind of seal this in. All along the edge here is going to connect to the roof. This is why I said don't fold it so it's flat against it because it needs to be sticking out to make contact with the edge of the tiles. Bring your roof in, plop on top, give it a rough line up, make sure it's about where you want it. And then after you've got it about where you want it, turn the building upside down, stick your thumbs through the hollow bit and run them along the gluey flap to get it stuck nice and firmly. Then you have your lovely building here. You're done. Look how quick that was. That was pretty much real time. However, the reason it took me 60 hours to do all of this is because I went a little step further to make it blend more with the table. I have based them and then this makes them more sturdy and makes them a bit more easy on the eye when you're gaming with them. I did this by sticking them on some rather thick card, PVA glue, some dirt and some grass flock. So there you have it. Pretty easy, pretty simple. Fits in lovely with the rest of them I've made here. And I am ecstatic that this is essentially more train than I'll ever need for Warhammer Age of Sigma, for Dungeons and Dragons, for a Song of Ice and Fire game, for Malifaux, for all of these uses for free. This is not all the train I'll make, but I've spent a lot of money on my nice fancy gaming mat, on setting up my gaming table, on my gaming room that I'm in now. And I don't have a lot left for scenery at the moment. So this is a lovely cheap way that's going to last a long time until I can invest in some more better quality terrain. You may have noticed as I was cutting them out when I showed you the sheet, there's some extras on there. There's some lovely extras that are shields, shop signs, pub signs, little flyers for different events. And one of my favourites is a little Easter egg itself. It is a little wanted sign for the Perry Brothers. Now the Perry Brothers uh, modelled some of the original miniatures for Games Workshop, like the Bretonians. They now own Perry Miniatures and they do some lovely historics over there. Also on this sheet are doors. Four extra doors for one building. Why are there so many doors? Now, this was a running feature. In all in all, there are 60 extra doors. Why are there so many doors? You've got painted ones, green ones, white ones, double ones, singular paired ones, ones that say private, ones that say beware, ones with a nice red frame. Why are there so many doors? Why? 
Now after 60 hours and cutting out 60 extra doors, a door an hour, all along with all the buildings, you might go nuts. Doors, 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 doors. I got over that in the end, had a little couple of days where I had like a cult going for doors. But I'm all right now, I'm feeling, feeling all right. This has been a hell of an eye-opener to make all of this terrain in the prep work I need to do for these videos for YouTube. So far, I'm gonna put two videos up on launch day today. I'm making this video today, or well, finishing it today. It took me about three weeks around my job and my child and my life commitments to prep for this. I would really appreciate some support. Hit that like button and subscribe. I'm gonna try and get one to you weekly. My next one is probably going to be a space marine to appease to the algorithm. All hail the algorithm! But a space marine in my own style, so I think I'm going to stick with the way I've done some space marines before and I'm going to show you how to do a nice camo pattern on that. So tune in next Friday and that one will be out then for you. Like I say, like and subscribe. Remember, it's not a pile of shame, it's a pile of future fun.